Welcome, everybody. It's good to have you here as we look at the book of Colossians and our study called Opening Up to a New Normal. And I saved you a seat. Why don't you come on and sit down? It's a nice, uh, comfortable seat, and uh, we can discuss this together. I like to think of you being right here with me as we study the Word of God and we encourage each other and as we learn together, because that's what it is to be a disciple, to be a learner. And boy, are we learning on when it comes to open and back up. There's so many different opinions. There's so many different ideas. There's so many different things to consider. It is a difficult uh, decision to make of how we're going to do that. And our leadership team at Faith Bible Chapel have met. And I have some uh, exciting news about that I want to tell you about. But I'm going to save that for the end. And uh, so we'll give you some uh, how we're going to open up and and the problem is, is that these plans that we make are uh, fluid. They are changing. We learn more and more, and, and uh, we have to adjust because we've never been through this before. And everybody has their different ideas. And back in Paul's day when he wrote the letter to Colossians, everybody had a different idea there too as to who Jesus is and how we could open up to him and how you walk with God. Some of them thought that you had to have a secret knowledge. That's why he talks about mystery a lot. Um, that's why Paul does. He's telling them, no, you don't need a secret knowledge. Christ is the center. He is it. If you have him, you have all you need. Some of them thought that they had to add Christ to their religious exercises, like their uh, festivals and things. And he says, no, that's not what defines our relationship with Christ. And then there was those who just... Um, didn't think Jesus could be uh, a God. And we talked about that last week, and we talked about his person, who he is, is he, that he's a person. He took on human flesh, and also that he's the one person in the Trinity, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And uh, we talked about who Jesus is last week. It really helps us with this week because it flows together, because Paul is teaching us first, and then he's going to tell us how that practically works. And we'll actually get into a little more of that next week, but we're setting that up again this week. Paul's making his points and reminding us and telling us the importance of being in Christ and the other things that he tells us today. So let's go to the Lord in a word of prayer. Father, thank you for your grace and your mercy. What a beautiful day. What a powerful word you've given us, Lord. Help us to grasp a hold of it. We thank you for your word that's true. Last week we talked about the truth. It's so hard to decide whether we're being fed the truth or not um, when it comes to the COVID-19 thing and there's so many different things. But God, your word is solid. What, what is true yesterday is true tomorrow. Your word never changes. It is truth, you say. And we thank you for that, Lord. And your son is truth. And we thank you for what he accomplished on the cross. So, Lord, open up our hearts today. We're opening up to a new normal in our world. And, Lord, we want to open up to a new normal in our walk with you. So thank you, God, for being here before we even study. You are here. You, are, you know each person who is a part of this today. And we ask you, Lord, to just open up our hearts that we might hear your voice. And may you receive the praise and glory. And we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Our, our scripture for today is Colossians. That's the book we're studying. And we're going to look at a couple verses in chapter 1 at the end of chapter 1. Verses 24 through 29, the book of Colossians. It says, Now I rejoice in what I am suffering for you. And then remember, Paul is under house arrest, and he's chained to a Roman soldier, and he is, he is stuck at home. That's where we got our series from Philippians. But we see that he's not stuck at home and being um, frustrated. He's stuck at home and rejoicing. And he says, I fill up in my flesh what is still lacking in regard to Christ's afflictions. That can be a bit confusing. He's not saying that Christ didn't accomplish everything on the cross, that he has to make up for it. But he, he is saying that just as Christ was afflicted, you can, be, uh, he, you can expect to be afflicted. Um, remember Jesus told his disciples that uh, I, I have been persecuted, you will be persecuted too. And Paul's in prison because he's being persecuted. And he's not saying that Jesus didn't do it all. He's just saying that the continuation of the church suffering is a, is a reality. And he says, for the sake of his body, Christ's body, which is the church. 
So he says, I'm doing this for the sake of the church, for the people that know Christ, for the church. He says, I have become its servant, meaning the church's servant, by the commission God gave me to present to you the mystery of God in its fullness, of the word of God in its fullness. So he says, it's all here. It's been here from the beginning, but it's been kind of a mystery what I'm going to tell you today. And he said, the mystery that has been kept hidden for ages and generations, but is now disclosed to the Lord's people. Now what I want to do is, I want to give you three things here, really similar to last week, and I'll explain later why that is. The first thing I want to talk about is my position. I am in Christ. He talks here about the Lord's people. If you go over to the beginning of chapter 1, the book of Colossians is written to God's holy people in Colossae, the faithful brothers and sisters in Christ. Now that little preposition is really important. It tells us location. It tells us position. So we think about the fact that it's the same word that is used when it says Peter was in the boat. And I can teach you some Greek today. And you can be real smart and you can tell people you know Greek because the, the word is in, E-N, in. The same, same as our English. And it, it means the place. And Paul, 164 times in his writings in the New Testament, he uses the word in Christ, in him, in the Lord. It's really important that we know that we are in Christ. And that, that's a position that changed. Colossians 1, 12 to 14 says this, And giving joyful thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of his holy people in the kingdom of light. And look, look what Christ did. For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the Son he loves, we have redemption. We have the forgiveness of sins. It goes on over here to say that he has reconciled us by Christ's physical body through death to present you holy in his sight without blemish and free from accusation. We're clean before him. We have, or Since we are in Christ, positionally, we have become new people. We have become uh, in Christ when we receive Christ as our Savior. There is a, um, a person who compiled, Neil Anderson compiled a list of who we are in Christ. And I can give you a copy of this if you want to email us at uh, fbchapel at zoominternet.net. I'd be glad to give you a copy of this. But he tells us who we are in Christ. This is our position. I am God's child. I am a friend of Jesus Christ. I've been justified. I'm united with the Lord. I belong to God. I'm a member of Christ's body. I've been chosen by God. I mean, this is letting us know that we're accepted in here. I am complete in Christ. I have direct access to him. I'm free from condemnation. How about that one? You'll never be condemned again. I am assured that God works for my good in all circumstances. I've been established, anointed, and sealed by God. I'm confident that God will complete the good work he started in me. I'm a citizen of heaven. I've not been given a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. I'm born of God. An evil one cannot touch me. And I didn't even go through the whole list. But he's telling us positionally that's who we are. So maybe I can help you with that by going postal. And now I don't mean that way. I just mean with an envelope. And let me show you something. Say this is me. And we say this is Jesus. That win. This is Jesus. This is me. What Paul is saying is that we are in Christ. That it's just like this. That, that when, when God looks at us, he doesn't, see, he doesn't see us. He sees Jesus. And, and wherever this Jesus goes, we've gone. So it says in Colossians, if I get back there, it says in Colossians that we pretty much were uh, the same thing as baptism. We were buried with Christ and we were, we were raised with Christ. It was as if we were on the cross. It was because he paid for our sin. He was our substitute. And we are, are in him now. It says here that having been buried with him in baptism. Now he's not talking about water baptism. He's saying that baptism is a picture of what happened. When you were baptized, if you were, if you received Christ and you were baptized, you get down in the water, that symbolizes your death. And when you come up out of the water, it symbolizes that you have a new life in Christ. And, and the Bible teaches us that we're in Christ. We are in this secure position where we are um, in Him. 
and it is if we've been buried with him in which you were also raised with him and this tells you how through your faith in the working of God what puts you in Christ is trusting that when Christ went on that cross he went on the cross for you and that's what you're trusting in to get to heaven so Jesus is the way you can remember that with the envelope this is the way that the letter gets to its destination and that's the way that we get to heaven is by Christ not by our works not by anything but trusting in Christ. And he's trying to remind them, look, you guys are in Christ. You have a whole new identity. You have a whole new um, future. You have a whole new um, life because you're in Christ. And so let me just stop a minute and ask you, are you in Christ? As not everybody is. We were born enemies, he tells us in chapter 1. He says, once you were alienated from God, we're separated, we're not in the envelope yet. But when we realize our sin and we realize we need a Savior, when we ask Him to save us, then we're in Christ. And then when we're in Christ, we're, we, God sees us in Jesus. And we sees us as clear and pure. And even though we don't act that way yet, positionally, that's who we are. And we're that way forever. And I'll explain that a little bit more in a minute. How about your understanding of who you are and what God's understanding, how God sees you? God sees you as pure and holy and righteous. And he has made you that way. And through Christ. So that, that's the first thing. That we are in Christ. And Paul uses that a lot. And Paul goes on. To them God has chosen to make known among the Gentiles. The glorious riches of this mystery. Which is Christ in you. Now, now he flips the tables and say. Not only are you in Christ. But Christ is in you. And if I get my envelope out again. Now we've got. Jesus and we've got me and now I am in Christ is in me right so I have Christ in me it's a spiritual truth that that uh, Jesus talked about not just Paul he told the disciples in John chapter 14 that he was going to send another comforter and that comforter is the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit would would is with them now but then would be in them that's because christ hadn't died yet he hadn't died on the cross yet he had he hadn't sent the holy spirit that we see in acts chapter 2 but second corinthians chapter 6 verse 16 tells us we are the temple of the living god that means that that god dwells in us and that's a big deal because last week i talked about this for in christ all the fullness of deity lives in bodily form right so in us lives the deity because he says, and in Christ you've been brought to fullness. We now have the provision to live the Christian life. We not only have the position that we talked about first, that we're in Christ, but now we have the provision to live a different life. And now we have Christ in us. And, and now what people see in us, they see us as us, but then Christ is in us. So we think differently, we act differently, we do differently. And that's something that Christ does for us. And he says, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Let's go with that for a minute. Ephesians chapter 1. Just a few books over. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 13 and 14 says this. And you were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation, the good news that Christ died for you. You received that by faith. You, you were included in Christ at that minute. And then when you believed, at that time when you trusted, you were marked in Him, in Christ, with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession to the praise of His glory. That verse is telling us we're sealed. We're sealed in with by the Holy Spirit. God will never turn His back on Himself, who is the Holy Spirit that's residing in you. And as a result of that, we're guaranteed heaven. He's sealed us. He's put his name on us. He's also given us a supply back to Colossians chapter 2, verses 9 to 20. For in Christ all the fullness of the deity lives in bodily form, and in Christ you've been brought to fullness. Romans 8, 9 to 11. I know I'm all over the place this morning, but it's, it's because it's taught all through the New Testament. But I'm not sure we totally get it. That what I'm saying is, is that we're in Christ, so positionally we're acceptable to God. That never changes. That Christ lives in us through His Holy Spirit. 
and supplies us with everything we need. He's our provision. Last week we talked about Christ's position. We talked about the fact that he was the Son of God. And then we looked at his, his provision, or his position was actually supreme. Remember the pizza? <laughs> that he was above all. And then his person, or his provision, his power, he is, self, he is sufficient to supply all we need. And now he's in us. You have ever are not in the realm of the flesh, but you are in the realm of the spirit, if indeed the spirit of God lives in you. And if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, they do not belong to Christ. So we, if you have the Holy Spirit, then you've received Christ. If you haven't received Christ, you do not have the Holy Spirit. You don't have the power to live a Christian life. You're not right with Christ. But he says, if Christ is in you, even though your body is subject to death because of sin, that's why we continue to sin, we don't live a perfect life. We still have the flesh to deal with. We still have part of us that is, we're, we're still waiting for that moment to be redeemed. We still have sinful desires. We still have sinful actions. We still, so we struggle with that as followers of Christ. But, Christ, but we struggle because the Spirit is in us. And the Spirit gives life because of righteousness. And if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, that's the Holy Spirit, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because of his spirit. All right, I feel like I'm telling you a lot, and I'm not sure that you're getting it, because what I'm trying to say is the essence of what I'm saying is, is that when we receive Christ, we become positionally okay with God. God receives us. He accepts us, not because of us, because of what Christ did. Then he gives us his Holy Spirit so that we can live a life that's different. And, and Paul is saying, we remember we said the Colossians, the way to identify that book is Jesus is in me transforming everything. Last week we talked who Jesus is. Now we're telling you and reminding you, and Paul is telling his people that Christ is now in me. And he he's expects me and he's given me the ability and the power to, to live a different life from the inside out. Not trying harder. But it's a process, and Paul continues on through that. So my first point was, is my position is in Christ. My provision, Christ is in me. And the third thing is my process, which Christ works through me. Look at what Paul says. Paul says, verse 29, To this end, what end? Making everyone fully mature in Christ, verse 28. Verse 29 says, To this end, I strenuously contend with all energy, I so powerfully work in me. No, it doesn't say that. It says the energy that Christ so powerfully works in me. Paul has learned how to let Christ live through him. And that's our struggle. That's, our, that's what we have to learn as we walk with Christ. And it's a process. Just like opening up is a process. We, we've made decisions and we've thought about it and we've learned some things and we've adjusted what we're going to do when we open up to, to match that uh, knowledge. And, and, and Paul says here, I teach everybody with all wisdom so that everyone can become fully mature in Christ. He says, we're learning. We're, 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 we've been raised to a new life, Romans 6, 4. But he says, we're learning how to walk with that so we don't walk life perfectly. It does, never changes our position. It, it, we can squench, quench the Spirit. We can um, have, have problems with the Spirit. The Spirit never leaves us, but we can quench the Spirit. And that's when, we, that's when we don't listen to him. And we've got to learn how to listen to God. We've got to learn. And when we open his word, the spirit speaks to us and he talks to us and he talks to us during the day. And we've got to learn to listen to that voice. And Paul says, this is, we want you to present you fully mature in Christ. And so um, I, I used an acronym here. Really what Paul was saying is, is it's a process of growth. And if we use the acronym GROW, the first word is G, and that's a group. You know, God doesn't expect us to grow alone. That's why he's given us the body of Christ, the church. And he's made people teachers, and he's made people have different gifts, and the body comes together, and we work together as a body, and we learn to follow Christ. That's what we're doing together. That's what we're doing right now. We read our Bible. That's the R. We get into the Word. We study it. We let God speak to us through it. And then we, O, oh, we obey it. And then we W, we walk in it. That's where we learn to walk. Notice it's not run. Notice it's not sit. This is an activity that we're doing. We're being disciplined. We're in the word. We're listening for the spirit. We're, we're hearing his voice. We're responding to him. We're obeying. And, and that's how we get to know Christ better. And that's how we get to look more like Christ. 
And that's how we mature and we grow up. And that's how Christ transforms us with the power that he's given inside of us. So where are you in your walk with God? You know, the Bible uses the idea of a baby. And I just wondered where you are, that maybe you're needing your diaper changed. <laughs> it's great Christ cleans us up, makes us totally clean. Or maybe you're on milk, or maybe solid food. Or maybe you're um, saying, bring on the meat. But, but what is your relationship with God like? How well do you hear the Holy Spirit's voice? We can just ask God to reveal himself to us as we get into his word, as we meet together. We can um, learn more about and open up to a new normal. And Paul's whole point in his book is, is that Christ is sufficient. There's a great verse in 1 Peter chapter 2, 3, 2, verse 3. His divine power has given everything that we need for a godly life. Christ doesn't expect us to live a godly life. We can't do that. He gives us the power to do that. We have to learn how to yield to him. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you, God, that we can be in Christ. That Just as that picture of that envelope, that we can be in you. You are the way and the truth and the life. And no one comes to the Father except through you. Just like and by faith, we place ourselves in that envelope, in your care, in your provision and what you've done on the cross and, and we just admit our sin and we trust you we, we become in christ and not only that but christ comes to live in us by the power of his holy spirit by his holy spirit who's fully god father son and holy spirit comes to live in us to empower us to do what god calls us to do we don't have to come up with it it even the bible even tells us that you will us to do you give us the desire to do and the obedient heart and, and God um, we thank you that that's true in our lives help us to believe it help us to trust it help us to um, hear your voice this week and help us not to quench the spirit or to grieve the spirit Lord when we do something that we know we shouldn't do it grieves you and that's why we ask for forgiveness so that we can our relationship is fixed just as we have to learn to live with other people we need to learn to list, live with the person of the Holy Spirit and God, we thank you that you've given him to us as followers of Christ, as believers, as those who've trusted, so that we can live a life that brings glory to you, so that we can live a life where others will want to have what we have. And Lord, help us to live that out in a practical way. And may you receive all the glory and praise, and we ask it in Jesus' name, amen. FBC Chapel family, stay tuned to the uh, announcement that we'll make concerning our reopening and we'll see you next time for opening up to a new normal you can uh, find a reading or a study plan on fbchapel.org that you can read daily monday through friday with us as we read through the book of colossians so have a great week and we'll see you next time Well, hello, Faith Bible Chapel family. I sure do miss you guys, and I'm excited to let you know about what we're going to do with Phase 1 um, and opening up. And when I use the term opening up, I'm not saying that we haven't been doing anything. We're talking about opening up the building, not our ministry. In fact, our online presence has, has gathered some people from across the U.S., and maybe even up in Canada on a weekly basis. So that's been really good, and I hope you've been taking advantage of that. And we're going to continue that uh, through this next step or the next phase of our opening. Uh, the leadership met. We've met a couple times. We met as, as church council, but we also met as with the trustees, and we came up with a plan, and I'll call it phase one of our reopening plan. Uh, there will be no Sunday school and no child care, so it'll just be a worship service. And we're going to go by the CDC guidelines, which is cleaning and disinfecting the facilities. We're going to sit six feet apart with social distancing. And then masks are recommended and available. So we'll have them there for you. You can bring your own. Um, or you can uh, stay at home. And, and I don't mean that in a negative way. Uh, if you are compromised in any way and you feel that 
it's too soon to open up for you, that is okay with us. I want you to know that it's okay to stay home. That's, that's what I meant. And I would love to see you, but at the same time, we want to stay healthy. We want to protect you. And if you feel that you're compromised in any way and you need to stay home, that's okay with us. I want you to know that. And, and even if you're just not comfortable with coming back yet, maybe you're not compromised and you're, you know what, it's just too soon for you. That's okay. What we're going to do is we're going to have the video available online just like we've been doing. And that way you can be uh, watching the same message that, that um, they're getting on Sunday morning in person. So that's the way we're going to start out. I want you to be um, flexible. We're, we're learning together. And uh, we're going to have people to help you when you come the first time. And, and hopefully we'll be able to uh, make adjustments together. So we, we need you to be flexible because we haven't done this before either. And as you can imagine, there's some very difficult decisions to make. And um, so we want you to um, think about that and do what's right for you. If you're sick, you know, make sure you stay home. And uh, that'll keep all of us safer. Um, the only other thing I wanted to talk to you about with is on uh, the 7th of June, we will have an outdoor drive-in service. And what that means is weather permitting, we're going to have a outdoor service. If you're not comfortable, you can come with the drive-in. It will be um, on the uh, radio on the same channel, I believe, that we used for Easter. And it will be very similar to that service, but we'll also offer that if you want to bring your lawn chairs and you want to sit in the grass it, it, with your social distancing and all, uh, you'll be able to do that. So we'll be able to see each other a little better, but we're still going to go by the CDC guidelines with that. So um, that's, an, that's what we're going to do next week, and we want you to come. And if you have any questions or if you have any concerns or details that you need, um, please make sure you talk to Ed or Sam or I, and uh, that way that you can uh, get your questions answered. And next week when we do our outdoor drive-in service, we, you can give us some uh, feedback on that as well. So um, we're looking for, for your input, but we've, we've also come up with our plan. But again, it's going to need some adjustments probably. So the one thing I want to really emphasize in, in this whole procedure is, is that we have to be careful that we stay unified. And, and it's a challenge because we all have different backgrounds. We all have different comfortability levels. We all have different thoughts on what should happen. And uh, we, we realized that when we got together as a leadership team, and we realized that within our, within our church family. So we're going to have to give each other grace. We're going to have to make sure we're, we're focusing on others. That's what Jesus did. We're supposed to have the same attitude that Christ had, Philippians chapter 2, where our attitude, our focus is on other people, that we're concerned about others, that we love them. And, and we have to really be careful because Satan can get a real foothold in, in the church, not just our congregation. All congregations are struggling with this. And when you start to, to meet separately and you're, we're not together, just like it's been the last 11 weeks, I think it's been, um, it's easy to get into other habits and to just think of yourself. And uh, so I want you to think of yourself when it comes, am I compromised, am I comfortable but I also, when we get together, or even if we're not together, it's okay that you stay home or that it's okay that you're there with us. We've got to um, just let the Holy Spirit work in our hearts and our lives. It's a time for us to grow. Every chaos or every uh, crisis or struggle that we have, God wants us to grow in Him. So I would like to pray for all of us before I, I close the video. So let's pray. Father, we thank you for every person who calls Faith Bible Chapel their home both in the online ministry as well as the in-person ministry. And God, as we start to meet together, as dictates, as the conditions seem to dictate, we can. Lord, we pray that you would give us wisdom, that you would keep us healthy, that you would help us to uh, have grace for each other, your grace. The Father, that we wouldn't feel judged because we've decided to stay home, or we wouldn't feel judged because we're going. Lord, we need your spirit to be at work in our hearts. We talked about that in this message. And Lord, we need your power.
because we know as human beings uh, the flesh can rear up and raise up and we can become very judgmental and hurtful to others and Lord we thank you that through this challenge that you're going to grow us up in you that Lord that we'll be able to learn to walk with you that we'll be able to see each other face to face and um, to just worship you with all of our hearts thank you for loving us thank you for your grace and your mercy and your word and may your church known as faith bible chapel be a family that exhibits the love of christ to their community that we shine the light that we are salt and light that others might come to know you and that you would be glorified and we ask this all in jesus name amen so we will what we'll do is we will look keep looking in your email for the de details of the service next week of the details of how things will be handled it's a little easier than doing it all here plus you'll have it in writing so that you can take a look at it so that'll be coming later this week so have a great week in the lord we look forward to to um, seeing each one of you or uh, meeting together when we can all meet together again whenever that might be but we're looking for the lord for our strength and our courage see you then